Oh, hi everyone, it's Philip here from Vet Education, and right now we're right in the middle of preparing for our upcoming course on disease management of the critically ill patient. And amongst the many things we've been looking at, we've been looking at the condition of DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. And I wanted to share a journal article, really interesting journal article that was published in the December 2018 version of the Journal of Veterinary Emergency and Critical Care by Dr. Robert Gox and colleagues. And it's on uh, basically the outcome prediction of dogs with overt disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. DIC, as we know, is a pretty severe complication of life-threatening disorders, which is why it comes up commonly when we're talking about sepsis and systemic inflammatory response syndrome and so on. And in the absence of any single gold standard test, there's a number of scoring systems that have been developed in an attempt to try and improve the diagnostic reliability of our current tests. So in this particular paper, it was hypothesized that dogs with laboratory abnormalities consistent with overt uh, DIC have got an increased mortality, and hence survival could be used to evaluate the performance of a DIC scoring system. So if you score high with DIC, you're more likely to die, and so on. So what they did in the study is they compared four different DIC scoring systems um, in clinically ill dogs. And the four systems they used were the International Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis, the ISTH score. They looked at a previously published veterinary DIC score that I'll talk a little bit more about in a couple of minutes' time. They used a system using an in-house reference intervals for coagulation assays, and then they also used the published veterinary DIC score that we mentioned in study two, uh, and they modified that by use of in-house reference interval uh, values. So we'll talk and dissect a little bit more about these things uh, right now. So to start with, let's talk about this International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis DIC scoring system. And basically this scoring system looks at things like platelet count, scoring a progressively higher score with decreasing platelet count. So the lower your platelet count is, the higher your a DIC score for platelets is prothrombin time again scoring a higher score with increasing prothrombin time above the reference ranges fibrinogen concentration and also D dimer with an increasing score the higher the number of D dimers that you had or higher the quantitative count of D dimers was the reference interval method used animals with values that fell outside the study institution's reference ranges for the standard tests of coagulation. And these were all collated, and those that met the criteria for DIC were included. And the criteria that they actually me measured included APTT, the PT, antithrombin activity, uh, fibrinogen concentration, the D dimer assays, and platelet count as well. The third system involved looking at a veterinary DIC scoring system that was published by Weinberg and colleagues in 2010, and they utilized the APTT, prothrombin time, fibrinogen, and D-dimer to arrive at a coagulation score uh, that eventually, eventually had a, a sensitivity of 91% and specificity of 90%. They also looked at the ISTH scoring system, but they lowered the threshold. Uh, in people, uh, if you... Uh, get a score of five, then you meet a diagnosis of DIC. And what they found in, in dogs was that if they lowered that score from five to four for the diagnosis of DIC, it resulted in improvement in sensitivity from 46 with a score of five to 76% uh, with a score of four. Um, and it also decreased the specificity from 100% down to 79%. So it wasn't as good as the score that they had developed themselves using a reasonably complex formula. So the modified uh, Weinberg score utilized the formula developed by Weinberg and colleagues in 2010 and adjusted the values of the diagnostic test using scaling factors to allow incorporation of the testing facility reference intervals into the Weinberg formula. So it was like the Weinberg formula, but it then utilized the institution's reference intervals and applied a scaling factor so that they fitted into the Weinberg score. And that particular study um, that we're talking about utilized uh, all four of those scoring systems in each patient to see which one was the most reliable. And the study itself included 804 client-owned dogs with naturally occurring DIC and the four scoring methods as we've already mentioned uh, were used to score DIC and uh, by applying them to the laboratory data obtained from the patients. 
So in this study population, the reference interval method, that is it used the criteria measured within the hospital institution, actually provided the most accurate assessment of mortality, a score based in, on abnormalities of three of the six criteria tested. And remember, the criteria that they tested in that particular study was APTT, the PT, antithrombin activity, fibrinogen, D-dimer assays, and platelet count, importantly. And the score based on abnormalities of three of those six criteria tested was 72.7% sensitive and 80.9% specific for mortality, with mortality rate for dogs diagnosed with overt DIC being 62.5% versus a mortality rate of only 12.9% in dogs without overt DIC. In summary, this study demonstrated that in dogs with diseases recognized as triggers for DIC, that a comparison of a coagulation panel including platelet count using a cutoff of three or more abnormal values, um, increased PT, APTT, D-dimer, increased antithrombin and platelet count was both sensitive and specific for prediction of non-survival to hospital discharge and performed better than previously reported human studies, the ISTH1 and the veterinary scoring system that have been developed as well and will likely be useful for uh, further identification work or in, in detecting overt DIC and its relationship to mortality in these patients. So hopefully you enjoyed that wrap up of that particular article. We'll be back in a little bit more time with some more information of the many, many journal articles that we've been wading through as we're constructing our notes for the Management of Severe Systemic Disease course that starts on the 28th of April this year. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about that course, just visit our webpage, veteducation.com.au. Click on the veterinary courses page. And there's a whole week by week breakdown of what's in that course. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to what we've had to say today and uh, hope you have a fantastic day ahead. Thank you very much.